A group of researchers from Germany and the United States have published a study which concludes that doping xenophobic populations with massive quantities of the estrogen-linked hormone oxytocin will cure nationalism, making native citizens more accepting and generous towards migrants who simply want free handouts from Western taxpayers, while Islamic extremists peacefully rape and murder infidels. According to co-author René Hurlman, quote, Accommodating the large influx of migrants not only challenges the humanitarian capacities of European countries, but also requires their native populations to adjust to rapid growths in ethnic diversity, religious pluralism, and cultural differentiation. However, the impetus to adapt to changing social ecosystems is susceptible to considerable inter-individual heterogeneity. Resistance to this transition often goes along with xenophobic sentiment, and as a consequence, recent elections in Europe have favoured populist candidates who have openly expressed xenophobic attitudes toward refugees. He goes on further to say, Given the right circumstances, oxytocin may help promote the acceptance and integration of migrants into Western cultures. Widely referred to as the love hormone, hug hormone, and the cuddle chemical, oxytocin is secreted from the pituitary gland during sex, childbirth, and lactation, influencing social behavior and emotion. It has been shown to increase romantic attachment and empathy, invoking feelings of relaxation, trust, and psychological stability. The study concludes that a combination of oxytocin nasal spray and social pressure from other doped-up participants resulted in xenophobic test subjects increasing donations to migrants by 74%. The research paper states, quote, Our results imply that an OXT-enforced social norm adherence could be instrumental in motivating a more generalized acceptance toward ethnic diversity, religious plurality, and cultural differentiation resulting from migration by proposing that interventions to increase altruism are most effective when charitable social cues instill the notion that one's in-group shows strong affection for an out-group. Furthermore, UNESCO has emphasized the importance of developing neurobiologically informed strategies for reducing xenophobic, hostile, and discriminatory attitudes. Thus, considering OXT-enforced normative incentives in developing future interventions and policy programs intended to reduce outgroup rejection may be an important step toward making the principle of social inclusion a daily reality in our societies. Perhaps these researchers can also explore how to chemically control the refugees themselves to make them less violent, less rape-prone, and less willing to destroy other cultures. Maybe if they tainted the water supply in Saudi Arabia with oxytocin, they'd start accepting refugees instead of forcing Europe to shoulder this burden. As an aside, the BBC also reported last week that lithium added to tap water may cut dementia by up to 17%. If this sounds like something from Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, well, it is. The only difference is, in our Brave New World, we have a native population that has been targeted for chemical eradication.